Proverbs first line, verse 10. If you want to turn to that, this is one of the most powerful words that you can hear from God. Anything you can take out of this is from the Lord Himself. I've come to believe, sometimes I don't understand that everything that is in this thing, but God said it, I'm going to believe it. Amen. If God's going to reveal the knowledge of that understanding to me at a later time, I'll take that. But I'm going to read the Word of God. But in Proverbs verse 9, verse 10, For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy is the understanding of that. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, I thank and praise you for your most precious word. God, I know you laid this on my heart to bring here tonight, God, for someone, God, that may need to know the Lord or may need the encouragement or may need deliverance, God. And I pray, Lord, that you just use me as your servant, God. I pray for your anointing to come down. I pray and I thank you for your precious word. You said your word would never return to you void. And God, I just thank and praise you for all your goodness and love, God. And I pray that you open all the ears that are out there to hear and the ministry to all the hearts and lives that we have here today. Thank you, Lord. I have about five more pieces of paper up here, boy. You'd really be really going to slide them all over the place. Who knows? But our country, as we close and notice, has been trying to just push out the God that we know all over the world. From our Senate and our House of Representatives, and I didn't think I was going to get too political, I'm not going to get too political, but I trust in God. I trust in the Lord. Right. Every time someone would even bring up the Lord or prayer or a time of prayer or a time of quietness just to contemplate about us. We have people on our Senate floors and our House of Representative floors sitting and said, we do not need prayer at this time. We need answers. Yeah. Well, I want to tell you there's a president back and I wrote this note down. I wanted to share it with you. This is a very important president. This guy's name was Abraham Lincoln. You guys ever heard of him? He wrote this proclamation. Proclamation 97. And I challenge you to go to Google and Google it up. It's a fantastic read if you want to read this thing. But on that, on the day, it was March 30th, 1863. Our country was in a terrible, terrible civil war at that time. Hundreds of thousands of men and women were being wiped out and killed. The resources of America was trying to be wiped out by the devil at that time. And, Jesus, and, and Abraham Lincoln made a proclamation. This is the President of the United States. I can't believe it. Are we comparing to the President that we have now? Or the people we have in the House of Representatives and the Senators? We'd be almost ashamed. When they come up, I'm going to call, here's what he called for. I'm going to call for a day of humiliation, prayer, and fasting for our country. Amen. And I believe, and if any of you will research this a little more, this kid's changed me right before I came here. If you look it up and research it just a little more, I believe the Senate and the House both back this. And they call for a day of prayer. And they have a day of prayer and they have a weekend of, of repenting. And everybody went to church and they prayed and they fasted because our country was at war. It's actually destroying our, our, our own country at that time. And guess what happened? Not soon after that, that months, almost a year, I think this is about 11 months or 13 months, the Civil War ended. But people got down. It says, if my people who are called by my name will get down on their knees and pray, I will heal their land and work set. They are trying to push out right now every part of moral compass that we have in this world. If you just use the Ten Commandments as a moral compass, what is the first one he says? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We constantly see nothing but gods of self that we have out there. Gods of self that are coming up. Beyond the Buddhas and everything else that is coming up into this world. In this world, our country is just coming in. They're coming up. Gods of self. I shall make no graven images. Look at this. That's more of You can just, as a, a picture in your mind as I go down this list of things. Thou shalt not use the Lord thy God in vain. We see it daily from our Congress. We see it daily from the movies that we watch. We see it daily from the TV that we look at. In the name of God used in vain as such as if I, my house, my, my grandparents who raised me were fantastic people, but they were not Christian. They, they kind of needed to get saved, I'll have to tell you that. But I tell you, if I ever used the Lord's name in vain in my house, there was a lady coming down on the back of my head. 
And many of you don't know what a shillelagh is, an Irish stick with that little knot on the end of it, and they pop you one, you know what I mean. And she was straightening up, we'll be having none of that kind of talk. Uh, talk, talk, talk her, sorry. We'll be having that, none of that kind of talk that you would do there. But it's just what it is. Honor thy father and mother. Amen. It is ripping apart the families of America. Right. Amen. We've made divorce so easy. We've made it so easy for people just to separate. You just don't believe it. The things that just tearing apart the family. And my, I came from a broken family. I did. I, I, I saw my father one time when I was 12 years old. After I was a young baby. I didn't remember that, that too. But yeah, about 12. After that I didn't see him at all. But I remember seeing him. I just remember the scene. He was a, a nice man. I really wanted to know about him. But just the guilt of whatever he had in his life. And he separated us. Oh my God. And somehow he put my grandparents there to raise me up. And a lot of us we see that day. There's a lot of people out there that are, are grandparents raising kids right now. And I'm going to pray for them. Because I know what kind of influence yeah. my parents did. They yeah. taught me how to work. They oh. taught me to be have good morals about myself. Yeah. They even taught me. I remember my grandmother. She didn't go to church. But she would talk about the Lord once in a while. She would talk about the right things. Yeah, she, she could probably quote you to take command. I'm sure you there. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's just run wild. I'm not going to say no more on that. We can spend a whole sermon just on that. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. What does that mean? Thou shalt not lie. Have you listened to the news lately? <laughs> it is prevalent. Our news in America, our major neighbor, major news networks come out and lie constantly and constantly and constantly. We don't even know what we can believe of them. Finally, I just quit watching them all together. I kind of get the weather, and then even the weather, I get on my app on the phone and tell them I still the going to be in Bakersfield, even Missouri, that's where our family goes back there. We'll check on them. And thou shalt not cut it. Hebrews 12 tells us, therefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Yes. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Amen. Our nation has lost its godly fear. They pushed it away. The devil, they, we have allowed the devil to push it to a state that they don't even believe that it is there. Amen. They've done surveys. They ask Christians. They say, people that go away want to say Christians. They ask people that go to church. How many believe in heaven and hell? And the majority, 60% will believe in heaven. 40% don't even believe in hell. Jesus talked about hell more than anything else in the New Testament when he's out right. on this earth. Yeah. In his 33 years, he talked a lot about hell. Yeah. But we have no godly fear. Right. Uh, verse 29, Hebrews 12, 29 says, God is consuming fire. Yes. I was thinking about a consuming fire and I thought of my granddad. <laughs> My granddad had in his backyard what's called a burning barrel. I don't know if many of you know what a burning barrel are or have you experienced the thrill of a burning barrel, but it's a place for a barrel that you went out back and you burned your trash. And we owned a business there in French Camp, California. And in the morning, I was nine or 10 years old, probably not like Nathan's size, and my grandfather would get out. We'd take all the cardboard and everything that we have from all the deliveries that come through our business. And my grandfather absolutely loved it out there. He was at peace with himself in this burning barrel. He'd throw something else in the fire. I always thought he's one of those uh, fire on it people. I don't know, light fires or something. But he liked to get out there and just burn the fire and throw the cardboard in there and throw the trash in there and we'd burn it. And every once in a while, uh, we wouldn't tell grandma, we'd get a couple hot dogs out there on a stick and we'd have a little uh, roast in the morning just for something like this. But he absolutely loved it. And when the government came through and told him he couldn't have his burning barrel, he, I, I, I almost think he was just really sad for about three or four days that he didn't have his burning barrel no more. He was just absolutely loved it. He would go out there and relax and visit with me. But I remember all the stories he had about this burning barrel. And around the burning barrel, I tell you, he taught me not to get too close to the fire. And I remember my granddad telling me, uh, Tom, Tommy, I'm Tommy to all my family. Tommy, don't get close to that fire. You're going to burn your fingers. Right. Well, you know what I did? I got too close to the fire and I burned my fingers, of course. And then after I started listening to him a little bit better, I didn't get this close to the fire. At first. And then I learned how to get out of the smoke. Remember when the smoke's coming off your burning barrel or off the fires or off the campfire? And all of a sudden, it always finds you somehow. It always surround, wind always shifts around, comes right to you. But anyway, I learned how. Okay, you know, go move over here, move over here, stay out of the smoke, or else you'll smell like smoke. If you go to school, you'll get in trouble. <laughs> you can't be smelling like smoke when you go out there, out here anymore. So I was just out there helping him as I was waiting for a school bus. 
But a lot of times, there's going to, uh, us as Christians, we go through trials. We go through tribulations and things that we have here. And the world wants to push away Jesus a little bit. A little bit. We start leaning toward that way. When we start leaning that way. All of a sudden, our trials get a little bit harder, a little bit tremendous. And we go through this trial and this fire. In 1 Peter 1 and 7, it says, The trials of your faith being more precious than gold that perish. Though we are tried by fire, we might be found unto praising and honor and glory and the appearance of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. When you go through those trials, when you go through that fire, and, you, things, are gone, and things aren't going good. I know like that this week in the Smith family, we felt like we were going to it. But all it did was teach us to lean on Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And call on His most wonderful name that we have. Yeah. He is the most wonderful Savior, and He is always there. I have learned things from my daughter that are just amazing. She just kind of records everything that our pastor says, and every once in a while just starts quoting. <laughs> she is most of And she's always telling us how Jesus is there. Jesus is in the car. Jesus always went there. And she does this. And she, I tell you, she'll, she'll, if you're sick in our house, she's going to lay down and throw hands on you. She's going to start praying. She's going to call, call for the feeling power of Jesus Christ. I heard her the other day. She will do that with everything. The other day I heard her pray for a dog. Mm -hmm. Gotta heal this dog's bad breath. It's bad. <laughs> Why is hiding? It's a true story. We heard her. She was going about. She said, "You got to do it, Lord. You got to do it." <laughs> but that is so wonderful. That's how yeah. we need to be. Yeah. We need to have childlike faith that we yeah. believe and go to God first with all our things and problems. That He is not a fearful God either. That we were go to. We have a we have a fear, but it's a reverence. Yes. It's a reverence of a fear. That's right. We respect His name and there. Yes. There is a judgment coming. The craftiness of this world, the wisdom of this world, and the craftiness, God's going to deal with someday. Amen. There is going to be a judgment. There is going to be a judgment for all the evil things that have come across people. Yes. My wife had a conversation very recently with a dear, wonderful, close, good customer friend of hers. She is not a Christian, but she's a wonderful lady. We just love her to death. And they were talking about things in life because we've had several people in our in our, I want to tell you right now, guard your kids. Yeah. Guard your kids. Yeah. Keep yeah. bring them up in the admiration of the Lord and yeah. teach them about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Teach them about the Lord and His saving grace and tell them what sin is sin. Yeah. So they have fallen away into the deepest, darkest sin. Their hearts have gotten hard and has fallen in the way of this. Is. And it's not the world Christ to tell them, okay, they were just born that way. No, it's okay if they do this way. It's okay. Just accept them. You just have to accept them. But you've got to tell the truth. They've got to know the truth. You've got to absolutely know. If you don't know how to approach them, and it, time is growing short. Jesus is coming. He's going to be coming in a twinkle of an eye. We're going to be out of here. And this is our last opportunity for our loved ones and our friends to share this precious gospel of Jesus Christ. And maybe we don't have the words, and we don't want to just blurt it out to somebody who says, pray God to give you the wisdom and the words, and tell them to step forth boldly and just tell them about the love of Jesus. And tell them about what sin does. You just see what the church is even doing. The world's doing it and the church is doing it. Not the, this church, but I'm talking about the world, the church around America. Right. They take Romans 1 completely out of the Bible if they could. Right. And we'll just say, this teach you, it would do it. But you gotta have to, you got to tell them, you got to stand up and watch right, and what's good, and what's morally right, and share the precious gospel of Jesus Christ. And part of that is good news of the Lord. Amen. Oh, I just love Jesus and just thank you for His goodness. They have turned this way. For the wisdom of this world. This is Corinthians. Mark this in your, in your head. Again. Just bury it in your heart. First, first Corinthians 3.19 For the wisdom of this world with God is, is foolishness with God. It is written. He has taken the wise in their own craftiness. And you're seeing that in Washington, D.C. right now. Amen. I don't know if you see it, but things are being exposed. Right. And people are seeing it. And us as the church, we need to pray for our country and that we come down and, for, and that the, the, everything will be exposed. The thing that happened to Mr. Trump in the election uh, wasn't right. And everybody just kind of broke our heart. We came to church one day. And I just want to thank our pastor so wonderfully. He was the only one. We all came to church that, that hour at the election. 
And we're all looking through the gloom. And I'm trying to think you know, of all the good things, the positive things. You know, I trust in God. He's got this under control. And the pastor's the only one with a smile on his face. <laughs> and it gives me such hope and good. Yes, that's right. That's right. God's got it. God picks him up and puts him down. He's got this under control. Right, right. And he's supposed to stay in his habit. What's good? Well, what good is that, did you? But it's exposed what's going on. It has absolutely exposed what's going on. Amen. I have seen so much in the last few years that I came back to Jesus Christ. He has changed my heart and life for this born again experience. Amen. And I've seen people come to the altar and I've seen them fall away the next day. You know, uh, it's almost sometimes like they've heard this gospel so many times they're playing games with God. God knows your heart and intent. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to say this very carefully. Don't play games with God. Amen. When you come to Jesus, when you come to pray a sinner's prayer, be so committed, that's what I'm going to do. Because I have seen it. There are, when, when Jesus was that deal with the adulterous woman, what's the last the words he said to her? She says, do you I condemn you? He also said, he said, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Are we going to be perfect? No, we're not going to be perfect. But we're going to, when we get off an error, and we decide to get off into something, we're going to say, that's not right. Lord, forgive me. Keep me back from straight That's right. That's how easy it is. That's it. That is absolutely it. Amen. The, the, the paralyzed man. I want to show you. A, 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 you take the, the paralyzed man, by the well, me and Sean will try to pronounce his name, but I can't get it. It's in, it's, uh, in John 5 and 14 area, but I'm not going to but he was paralyzed, and Jesus walked by and healed him, and he said and afterwards, at the very last hearing, he said, Jesus hunted him down, he says, afterwards Jesus findeth him in the temple and he said to him, behold thou art made whole, and he tells him go and sin no more yes. and the next verse is the least worst things that come upon thee when you play games with God, when you come and just, oh, I give my heart to God, but I'm going to get drunk the next day. Come on. I'm going to just do this, and I'm going to do this because I have got better relief like that. You've just woke you. Right. Right. Come back to God. Come back, yes. yes. I'm going to tell you, you've got to repent. There is a repentance. Jesus in Luke 13 says, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall likewise perish. It, it is exactly what it says. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. There was a testimony of a young lady. I heard of this on TV. I love to watch YouTube, and I love testimonies. A lot of times when I'm down, or I seem like I'm in a quiet time or something, if I can't find anything else, I'll get on YouTube, but I'll find testimonies. Amen. There was a young lady, and she came to Jesus Christ. And she lived with a boyfriend. She went home to her boyfriend, packed up her stuff, and moved out. Amen. This was a young lady that was never, ever in church before, didn't have any understanding of the Bible, so to speak, as we would say. We just said, we've got to do things right. Our nation has stopped doing things right. But anyway, she went there, her boyfriend went down. He said, well, what's all this? You, I'm packing up, moving up. I just got saved. I love Jesus. I love him. Uh, uh, we can't live together. It's wrong. Well, that's hard to talk some <laughs> A lot of churches want to just accept that and say this. Get married. Get married. God is right there. Well, anyway, she, next Sunday, the boy went down to the... He went down to the church. He said, I want to find out about to get this kid saved. What is all this all about? Well, he went down with his girlfriend. His girlfriend took him down. She didn't live in no more. She went down there. You can come down there. She was true to this thing. She went down there and... The guys was in the worship service and it was going as it sounded kind of like what our worship service are. They're pretty tremendous. We've got people coming who's for the presence of God to be saved. And he's and what he was doing in the back, he was getting sick. He was getting sick in his stomach. And she turned to him and she said, he said, I'm getting sick, I'm gonna have to leave. He says, No, it's just the devil. Just be quiet. <laughs> she don't understand nothing about this though, but she knows God's it. God is the most wonderful thing. And he said, a lot, a lot of big churches, they come in and, and if you're a visitor, they give you a visitor, visitor's badge. A visitor's badge. I got that Central California accent coming out. A visitor's badge. And it had a visitor's badge. She said, well, how do you get saved? He was asking his girlfriend. He says, oh, I can't exactly tell you, but give your heart to the Lord. And when the preacher says, 
Ask about the visitors, you go get saved. That's all she can remember about the time was. So the old pre preacher comes up and he's visiting and he's asking to welcome the visitors like a lot of everybody does, like our pastor does. He welcomes all the visitors. Again. He got up out of his seat and headed right down the altar. He said, well, what, 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 sir, how can I help you? He says, I want to get saved. Amen. He said, okay, we can do that. God let him do this. But in any way, they want to get married and do the things right that they have. But she yeah. put by that by, by her witness of doing things right, right. of doing yeah. things correctly in the correct order how they should be. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not live with people unless you're married. Amen. Amen. Do those things right. Praise the Lord. The world's just trying to wipe that all out. They will love the right doing things the right way out. Right. Just get rid of it. Why it's okay anymore? Listen to our news broadcast. Listen to our congressmen and senators. Just says lying's okay. Just making up a story as we go or bending the truth how he does. I know where I spent the truth a little time. So mm -hmm. It's quiet. It's the truth, but it's just a little bit this way. Just get out of trouble mm -hmm. a little bit this way. You know what I mean. You guys know what I mean. All of our kids do it once in a while. That's how I learn. But we've got to teach them what to do these things with this. But judgment is coming. And you're going to stand before God. If you want to get scared, if you read Revelation 20. You read about the great white throne judgment. And those people are going to run. <laughs> they're going to try to hide. But they're not going to be able to hide. Because the Bible tells us the books are going to be open. And they're going to try to stand there. Well, nobody ever told me about this Jesus Christ. Nobody ever told me about this Lord. Nobody ever told me that I had to get saved. I had to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And the books are going to be open. And God's going to go, here. Sister Glenda told you. Well, here, Sister Shonda told you several times. Well, said, uh, sister, sister, and sister, they all told you, brother. They all told you. Your father told you. Everybody told you. Your minister told you. You heard it on TV about this precious love of Jesus Christ. Right. And you didn't you have to stand before God with that. Yeah. And the world just wants to put it away like it's not real. But I want to tell you, we have a high priest Yes. It cannot be touched without our with the feelings of our beginning to not be touched without the feelings of our infirmities, but with all points tempted, yet without sin. Amen. Therefore let us come boldly forward to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and grace in our time of need. There was a young lady, and I believe I've told this story before. And I tell I this one I'll get back to the testimonies that I love to listen to. <laughs> if, I, if I ever get down, that's what I do. Get YouTube. If YouTube is good for anything, it's got the Word of God on it some places, the good Word testimony. And she was a witch. She was in an occult. She was tied up on heroin and cocaine and every other drug and every other facet that carries on with that life. And she challenged God to reveal himself to her. And God revealed himself to her. <laughs> and she accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior. And her testimony goes on and on and it talks about the battles that she went through. But, but she was victorious for us. And one of the most wonderful things that she got, she was instantly delivered when she received Jesus Christ as her Savior from the heroin and the cocaine Amen. and the pot and the alcohol. Amen. It was just instantly gone. Absolutely wonderfully gone. But you know what was not gone? Cigarettes. <laughs> she had the biggest Amen. struggle. And she thought that was the biggest reproach to her testimony that she had. And she wanted to get rid of it. And it just wouldn't let go. And it's just like it had halts. And she got down and prayed. And it seemed like it, nothing was happening. Nothing happened. And finally, God gave her a word. I want you to go down to the doctor. I want you to get some patches. And I want you to use them. God works using doctors. And he can deliver you like that, but he wants you to, if he gives you a path to go, you use it. You will be victorious in that way. Most wonderful God, I just love you and praise you, God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's the most wonderful thing. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, yes. that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but for the everlasting life. Amen. People look at the first part, and they don't look at the back part of it that says, you could perish. Right. Your life is in danger if you don't receive Jesus Christ. Amen. Because God, the one above, who spoke this world and says, gave his only begotten Son, 
the most precious jewel that he had. He gave that whosoever, whosoever, anybody, absolutely anyone, if you feel Jesus and anything I've said tugging at your heart tonight, God can save you. Yes. God is more than you. The word believeth in that scripture. Even the devil believes Jesus is God. Amen. That is a true statement. He knows he is God. Yeah. Believing means I'm going to believe everything that Jesus did for me. I'm going to believe he died for me. Yeah. I'm going to believe he rose again on the third grave. And Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. <coughs> right on. It's the most wonderful thing, the most simple thing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. message for you, for someone here or someone on the internet or someone to make a decision that's been walking. God has set a table before us. And on that table, there is salvation. On that table, there is deliverance. On that table, there is financial assurity. All those things that people are proud. Everything that you would have, Jesus has on that table. Amen. I remember one time in my life, we had more money than Carter had got pills, as Grandma used to say. And, you know, it all went by the wayside. I've been rich, I've been poor. I love the way I am right now. <laughs> God has blessed me and take care of me. And there are financial commitments that people are trying to meet every day, and there's battles with this life and world. Bring him to God. It's set before that table. Seek him for guidance that he may assure you that your needs will be met. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or see begging for bread. Right. I don't know why I got off of that. I just felt led to. But if you're here, you do know Jesus. I'm going to tell you, there's a table where I sit right before you. I'm going to play this little song. I love this song. I play it when I'm down, and it reminds me that there's always a table set before me for the needs that I need. There's as always a Savior. He's ready to talk to me. He's always ready to talk. I always think of it as breaking bread with the Lord. <laughs> Hear the voice of love that's called me. There's a chair that waits for me. The friend who's understand everything is open for But you're standing at a distance. The shadow of your shoe. There's a light of hope that shines.
Are you fears? Are you sorrows and your sadness? He's the Savior when it calls. Bring it all to the table. Come on in. Find a place. There ain't no one turned away. All you sinners and all you saints, come right in. Find a place. Bring it all to the table. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. There ain't nothing yeah. he ain't seen before. Right. All your fears, all your sorrow, and your sadness. He's a savior and he calls. Bring it all to the table. Are you here today? You need to bring it to the table. We have a table set before you right here. Right. You need Jesus Christ as your Savior, I invite you to come. Yes. You have a hardship in your life right now that's going on that you don't know what to do, I invite you to come. If you need wisdom and guidance for a situation that just seems unbearable, I invite you to come. If you need deliverance from something that's holding you by bondage, I invite you to come. Yes. It's all set before the table and it's here for you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Oh, let's all stand up. Let's all stand up. Oh, let's lift up our hands tonight. Oh, let's lift up our hands and love on Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus, but I want to know him tonight. If so, I want to give you the opportunity. Just like Brother Tom was singing, bring it all to the table. Because there ain't nothing that he ain't seen before. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, you don't know my story. No, but Jesus does. He knows everything about you. He's not intimidated by your bondage. He's not intimidated by your hurts. Not intimidated by your pain. He says, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody here tonight need special prayer? Uh, brother Tom, uh, Brother Robert, why don't you come to the drums, brother? I know that uh, Brother Tom was talking a little bit tonight uh, about how now's the time not to be playing games with God because Jesus is coming. How many believe that he's coming soon? Amen. How many got loved ones that you need to see saved? children, grandchildren that are lost without God and, and you want to see them come to Christ before it's too late. Anybody, anybody in here like that? Oh, I'll tell you. I, I'd like us if we could tonight. I, I want us if you've got an unsaved loved one and you believe that God can get a hold of them I want you to come tonight and we're going to pray with you. Brother Tom will pray Brother Rick will pray uh, our elders Jay and Wayne I want you guys to help pray. That's what the scripture says but uh Let's believe God to just get a hold of them. Praise the Lord to save their souls. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. Let's believe the Lord. He's able to keep that which we have committed unto Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, G.
and now his face I see. The king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God, he's coming for me. Yes, he is filled with grace and mercy. Oh, but I'll tell you, 
That's what we have this lifespan. From the time you're born to the time you die, you have time to prepare to meet him. Yeah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen. Those that are saved, they're going to heaven. Those that are not saved, they're going to burn in hell. That's the true church. Amen. Whether this world wants to believe it or not. Amen. Hell is real, but thank God, so is heaven. Amen. And I'm going to heaven because my name has been written down in the land.